יהי שם אדוני מבורך מעתה ודולם על ביאף אוף אוהב ישראל פאונדיישן אוהב ישראל פאונדיישן You see בעזרת השם the link uh, under the screen coming soon from Hannah Medina I want to thank the Medina's family for hosting the shiur look at the great treats we have here everybody enjoying from them except uh, the teacher and <laughs> today we'll talk about God's mysterious plan. This is the topic. We are going to, we are in a, in a gate of remembrance, page 343, 23, you know, part 23 and 20, 22 and 23. We learned that a Jew must always be inclined and not declined. If you are stable, so and so, uh, same old same, it means that you're in decline. You're in serious troubles spiritually. Therefore, you elevate yourself by going to Torah classes, more prayers, and focusing on Torah learning. Okay? We learn that kindness we should do first with close friends, family. We have responsibility toward our community. More than far places, organizations, slash, pe- slash people. And the last thing we learn is to keep your secret to yourself. Otherwise, it's not a secret anymore. Um, only if you have to reveal and you have to say, you, you say it. Remember, we asked a question the other day. What if uh, a woman went to a doctor? Not if. It was a case like that. A woman went to a doctor and she found out that she's really has, she has a sickness. The most famous sickness. Okay. She asked to be to save that information among between herself, doctor, and her husband. Remember that? We discussed that? So the question was to the rabbi, I think Rabbi Zilbishna had to deal with that from Israel Nebrak. And the question was, the husband came and asked if he can share that information with her father. She asked only doctor, her husband, and she. And now he wants to share with his father in law. We heard a lot of opinions. The Allah says, yes, to share with the Father, because the power of tefillah, prayers that parents has over the children, is the highest level, very strong. And she now needs all help she can get. Unless the husband, the, the father is not in a good condition, knowing that if you tell him, he can get a heart attack or something bad happened to him. In that case, you don't tell anything. Otherwise, you share. Nonetheless, the wife doesn't want that. Because this is for her uh, benefit. Rabbi, can I ask a question? Sure. What, what uh, uh, bracha is, uh, has more power on oneself? Uh, their own bracha or somebody else's prayer? You're talking about prayer? Like if uh, Hashem is our seat, Hashem will listen to me first. Well, it depends on the it depends on the occasion. It's a very good question. There's a saying, "En asir metir atzmo mi bet asurim," meaning a prisoner cannot release himself from prison. Meaning, most of the time, it's better that people else will release you by praying for you. And there is a saying, "Kol amitpalel al chavero." Anyone that says prayer, take prayer for his friends, who na anat hela, he will be answered first. But in, in, in the case that he needs for the same troubles, same problems, you, you, you pray for someone to have kids and you don't have kids, you'll, you'll be blessed first. So in very special occasions, ones that he's praying for himself can get uh, uh, speedy recovery and blessing from that. And we brought the, the, the story with Hezkiah the king in the book of Kings, Kings 2, that even Isaiah... The prophet came to him and told him, write your will, because he was about to die a day or two later. And he says, okay, finish your prophecy and leave. And he turned him his head. He was so sick, he could turn, just turn his face to the wall. And he prayed to Hashem, and Hashem gave them an extra 15 years for his life. So we saw that in some cases, like his guy was a great tzaddik, he was righteous. His prayer was good enough to save him from his bad situation. But 
many, many, most of the cases is better that people will pray for you, but don't hold yourself from praying to Hashem. It's not, it's not, it's on the case that you're praying too. It's not, you know what, you're supposed to pray for me, I'm not going to do it. No, you pray also and ask for what you need. And with the support of the community or family, you can break and change in heaven bad decrees. Okay? <clears throat> Okay, so number uh, 22, let's go. One must remember always to do good with his friends, to assist them in their labors and burdens, to love for them what he loves for himself, and to hate for them what he hates for himself. One must exert himself to acquire true brothers and friends that will help him in Torah. If your heart is whole with them, they will love you, and many will desire your well-being and reveal your secret to only one in a thousand. Okay, so we learned that already. Yeah, we learned that. Okay, already. number 23. One must remember always the greatness of the blessed God and cre consider the creations of the universe. He, by the way, he talks about this part, 23, about something that happens to us every day. We take things for granted. It's obvious that the sun is rising, and we have rain, and we have season of hot and cold, and we actually, we shouldn't. You know, people don't stop usually to think about God's great creation. Imagine to yourself just the sun. The sun, how, what's holding the sun where it is? If, if, if this, imagine that the sun was only one inch now closer to earth. What do you think would happen on earth? Will be burned. What do you think if the sun will be backward one inch? It freeze. Will freeze. So what holding the sun there stable never moves. Another question, by the way, I asked you many years ago, and I don't have answers. I tried read. I mean, I didn't find any answer that pleases me. We know that any material consumed by fire. So what's going on in, in, in the sun? Why is not consuming itself? Same shape, same size, all the time, and it's burning. It's pretty hot over there, right? What's holding it? Why is it not consuming? What's not? Nothing is burning. Yeah, but it's burning. Like the bush. It's the same thing like the bush with Moshe. Yeah. Like the bush. It's one of Hashem's miracle, like the Buddha. What are you saying? It's something about God's miracle, but scientists won't accept that. They have to find a scientific excuse for that. Nothing that I read uh, pleases me. Uh, a, they say uh, gas, they say no, this, about gas. They, huh? say, they say there is um, a, a um, combustion between uh, atoms uh, of uh, nuclear atoms, right? I mean, it will... Atoms, it okay. Will, will okay, but nothing is, is wasting. It's, it, it's, 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 not, it's not losing its shape. It's not getting smaller or bigger. Yeah. Well, uh, how it works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mysterious to me. Anyways, by the way, the Rambam speaks about this one of these stars, it's considered one of the stars, Shemesh, and it says something surprising. It says that, Maimonides says that, these stars are Hashem's servants, and they have mind, they have sechel, they, have, they know their job, they know who created them, and they know what they need to do on a daily basis. I don't know if it does, this, is, this is a type of angel in the shape of, I don't know, I'm, I'm not the expert. But when you read it, you understand there is more into it in the Maimonides. Maybe we'll discuss it another time. So, go ahead. <laughs> so, consider the creations of the universe, things both great and small, the, the revolution of the spheres, the sun, moon, and stars, the falling of the rain and the blowing of the wind, and other such phenomena without number. Because one constantly sees these wonders, he is not greatly impressed by them, but he is awestruck at an eclipse of the sun or the moon, because this is not a constant and recurring as the circuit of the sun each day from east to west. So what do you do? Okay, I wake up in the morning, I see the sun every day, I see the night, I see every... It's a mundane thing for me, I see it every day. How should... What do you, what do you want me to do to uh, appreciate that? Something you get used to, you don't appreciate anymore. You take it for granted, you're used to it. So what should they do? Give me an advice, give me a trick. 
is the answer. Go ahead. Therefore, contemplate these things and imagine that you have never seen these wonders before. Imagine that you were blind until now and that you are just opening your eyes. Every day, try to find out something new about the sun, the greatness of the sun, how it works for... For example, the, the question I asked just two minutes ago about the sun, how, why it's not consuming itself. Every day, try to forget what you saw the other day, so every day will be new to you. A little bit, a little bit. Just enjoy God's creation. It's there, but know that you don't know really what it is. Maybe we'll never will. Okay? Go ahead. They will certainly appear as great wonders then. Repeat this procedure every day. This is as King David said in Tehillim 139.14. Your works are wondrous and my soul knows it exceedingly. Your works are wonders and my soul knows it exceedingly. My dear friends, listen to this. I see this every day, and I saw it in the, in the, in, in the book of Shemot. What's Shemot in English? Names. names. The book of names? Mm -hmm. So we have Genesis. What's the next one? Exodus. Exodus. The book of Shemot. So in Exodus 15, verse 25, actually I think it's 21, 22, until 25, it talks about people of Israel leaving the Red Sea after they cross it. And they're out. So they're going from the Red Sea, leading where? To Midbar Shur, a desert that's called the Desert of Shur. Let's see what happens. So while they were walking in the sea, they could drink the water. It was a miracle for them. For them, it was not salty. It was sweet, regular, like tapping water. Okay? Tap water. By walking after three days, they consume all the water. And all of a sudden, they found out that they are without water. Three days walking, there is no source of water. Okay. So what did they do? What did the first thing they did? They started to complain to Moses. We get out from Egypt. This is horrible. People are going to die. The animals are going to die. Bah, 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 bah. All these complaints. So... Hashem, Hashem, what's happening here? Help me out. I said, why are you crying to me? All of a sudden, they saw a lake. They called the lake Mara. Oh, a lake, what a miracle. Baruch Hashem, everybody runs to the lake. They drink from it. <clears throat> Spinning out. What happened? The water are bitter. Undrinkable. They can't drink it. Now it's worse. Finally, we found water, and now the water are bitter. What are you going to do? How are you going to water three point something million people before the animals? And it says, as, Vayorehu Hashem etz. And he, he cried out to Hashem. And Hashem told him, There's a tree there. The Midrash says the name of the tree was Hardufoni. You take a piece from it. He took a piece. He wrote the name of Hashem on it. And he threw it to the water. What happened to the water? He sweetened the water. And the water becomes sweet. Everybody can drink. Now listen to what happens. If you try, you taste this tree, Hardufoni, it's very bitter by itself. Animals never eat from it. Animals eat from it, they most surely die. Most die. How is it possible that bitter to a bitter water uh, makes, it, makes it... If I take water... And I put half a spoon salt. It's going to be salty. I won't be able to drink this coffee. So what, how can I fix it? No, it's too salty. You know what? Give me another spoon of salt. Let's see if we'll fix it. <laughs> That's not going to fix it. So what Hashem, what Hashem is doing here? And also it looks like Hashem didn't hear out. You know Hebrew, it says, Vayorehu Hashem. The word Vayorehu, it's not showing exactly because it should say Vayerehu with Aleph. There's no Aleph there. Vayorehu is like Hore, Hora'ah, like Moreh, like teacher. You can read it like he's teaching him. So it looks like it's the whole, what happened here, all what happened is now it's a teaching, it's a lesson to the people of Israel. What's the lesson? For them not to be better. What's the lesson? You know? 
and also let's say it's it's very very have very strong uh, uh, sweet taste to that piece of wood. It's a lake. Well, if I take a barrel of water and I put a spoon of sugar in it and make it uh, sweet, mm -hmm. I have to have a lot of sugar in it, right? Yeah. So how this small piece makes it sweet, the whole lake. Because it has Hashem's name on it, so they need to remember the name of Hashem. And who brought okay, it. that's a good one. First of all, Hashem wanted to test them. Hashem told them, this is your first test after crossing the Red Sea. I wanted to teach you something. It's a great lesson for everybody. In life, we have a lot of obstacles. And Hashem is trying us out. And He's testing us. Sometimes we're making all efforts and we get to a bitter water. But the remedy, the refuah, is right there. It was there all the time. The remedy is there. Hashem just wants to see how you act, how you behave. You complain, we say, Hashem, help me out. I'm in your hand. There's nothing I can do. At that point, when they cry out, when Hashem, Moshe cried, Hashem says, here's the remedy. It's there. Hashem always creates remedy, trufa, refuah, before the strike. And everything that happens to us, any, God forbid, strike or sickness or... The remedy, the refuah is there. We need to have the merit to earn it, to get it. So what do we need to do? To open our eyes. To see what's going on, why it happens to me. How can I fix it? And we get to the, when we get to a point that we don't know how to fix it, we can't see the remedy. We know, we learn that it's there. It's there, but I can't see it. What should I do? I don't have Moses to come and help me out and tell me this is the tree, this is the uh, thing you have to use. This is your uh, medication. I, I don't have anybody. Now comes the power of tefillah. When you say tefillah before Hashem, Hashem says, Hashem, I'm in your hand completely. No one can help me anymore. So you're making a immediately direct connection with God, a direct line, line, and Hashem will bring a refuah and healing to you. Uh, sooner the better to recognize that it comes from the Almighty and only Him can help you. Even if you go, have to go to the doctor, you ask Hashem, please make the doctor as a good messenger, as a good sheliach for me. Doctors making mistakes many times. So we hope you won't do mistake in my case. Anyone case, but especially now, I, I, I need a foil. Okay. So God has mysterious plan. We cannot always see the full picture. Why it happens? We have a lot of questions. We have more questions than answers. But there's one answer for everything. Make a connection, direct line between you and Hashem. You need to be worthy for that. You need to act according to the Torah that He asked you, that He, that he commanded you. You can't be a sinner and expect Hashem to help you out. If you're a sinner and yet you're successful, you're in a very bad shape. Because God is paying you in this world for all the little mitzvot you did. God has mysterious ways and mysterious plan. And I want to share with you a story that happened a few years ago. I just read it lately. It's a true story that Rabbi Yitzchak Zilberstein uh, shared. And one day on Shabbat, a family did a Kiddush, Kiddush lunch. They sponsor a Kiddush lunch. What for? They come back from America with their son after a heart surgery. It was a baby, and he was treated successfully. And for that, immediately they came home and did a sponsor a Kiddush. As a Thanksgiving, a lot of people will come and participate and say, many brachot, it will be Dvar Torah, and we cut the Amazon together. It's something that brings upon you and your family a lot of blessings. Okay. And this Avrech, Avrech is, is, is a young student. In Yiddish they call it Jungerman. This Avrech stood up and he told an amazing story. He said, I'll tell you what happens. Remember, and he shared with his community, that his baby was diagnosed with heart failure. He has a defect in the heart. Doctors in Israel 
send them from one expert to another. And they told them, we don't have the right tools or, or, or the right expertise to treat and fix him. But there is a doctor they recommend in America. And you should go there. They do these kind of things. And he's number one. The cost of the whole travel, back and forth, the interest, and paying for the doctors, the operations, is going to take a few hours. It was $100,000. Now, these guys barely can pay rent. So what did they do? They reached out to the community. You know, these uh, campaigns you do online, and you have to reach some goals. They did that, they did this. And a short amount of time later, they were able to raise 100,000 people. We were heartbroken when we hearing this story. So everybody gave. It was unbelievable to raise so much money in short a short period of time. They took the trip to America. When they get there, these guys, this couple doesn't know Hebrew. It doesn't know English. They speak only Yiddish or Hebrew. Remember that I told you about the company, family that comes here to Dallas? So many times we have to be interpreters for them. We have to assign someone to help them out. They cannot even go to a store to say, I want to buy a bread. They, they speak Hebrew. Finish. It's like you going to China. Uh, don't go to China now. What? <laughs> <laughs> you go to Japan. Japan. Okay, Japan. <laughs> and ask, uh, can I buy bread? Uh, but you say it in Hebrew. Not, what, what, what are you talking about? You speak the language we understand. So the couple noticed that the secretary is, is a little bit t- intense. So what happened was they tried to understand what she's saying. They don't understand. There was a Jew there, as I want to say happens to be a Jew local that noticed this couple, and you see a guy with the pears, you see, he noticed that the Jew, he wanted to welcome him, Shalom Aleichem, Aleichem Shalom, what are you doing here? You know, happens all the time. He happens to be in that department. And say, do me a favor, you understand what she's saying? What's going on here? He said, let me listen. After a minute, he says, she's debating with the doctor, and the doctor doesn't want to come, the surgeon doesn't want to come. Why he doesn't want to come? We came all the way. Everything was set up. He said, that they checked the baby and they found out that there's another issue, that they are not part of the first analysis. And that requires another $100,000 for surgery, procedures, insurance. Uh, and he will not come unless he's guaranteed another 100000 This guy was number one expert, but he was also very cruel. Very cold. So they said, she said to him, you got to, pretty much there's nothing I can do. The mother almost fainted. She has the baby there. And he doesn't know what to do. I don't speak the language. I got everything with me. All papers were signed. He was supposed to go to surgery, I think in a few, I don't know, hours or so. And then she said, what can I tell you? He says, you need an answer within an hour. So he says, Tell him, please tell him that, you know what, you put me on the corner. Give me a few days. I don't know what to do. You give me an hour. He said, no, 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 forget it. It's not going to happen within an hour. If it's not happening in an hour, he's going to the Caribbean to a vacation. And when he comes back, there you have a very tight schedule because of the vacation. All that, many people before you. So... The baby need that surgery urgently. Even there coming to that day, it was already it's almost late. So now imagine yourself, God forbid, in that situ- to be in that situation. You know that you're supposed to do the surgery that day. You make a lot of efforts to come and to bring all the money. And you don't even know if it will succeed. And now they said they've been rejected. And you have to raise another $100,000 in one hour. Guys, it's a true story. 
What happened was, they both started crying. She opened the Sefer Tehillim. She couldn't stand. She was on the floor and saying, Hashem, what can I do? So this guy saw them and he said, you know what, let me, let me tell you. There's a very rich man, a Jewish man, lives here. Not, not far away from the hospital. <coughs> Give it a shot. Knock on his door. He said, but he doesn't know me. But what's the address? I don't know. To get, give me a, it's, 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 you, you, you go to this street, make a left, right? The big house, knock on the door, he's there. <sighs> he's looking at his wife. He says, okay, what can we do? And then the Jew, guy, the Jew that interpreted was the, he left. He already wasted 10 minutes. These guys are serious. The doctor says, the professor, I'm not coming. So he went to that address, knocking on the door, and asked him, it happens to be that the owner of the house, the rich man, opened the door and says, you younger man, younger man is the average, the, you know, yeah, yeah, younger man from Nebrak, from Nebrak, younger man, Israel, he says, uh, this is for you, he gave him an envelope, he says, I have to go, he says, no, you have to listen to, I have to tell you something, you know, people come, just... Two days ago, I have uh, two guys. I don't know if they can knock on your door. You know, they, they come to your door and they're collecting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have them? Mm-hmm. These two guys, they came one of them. They came together, but they came together. So people usually give them a check, $18, $36, $5, $10. Some people have envelope ready for Masrot. If someone comes, they just give it to him. He doesn't want that. He needs $100,000. Mm-hmm. So he looks, he says... Uh, let me tell you, I, listen, I don't have time, I have to go. He ran out to his car, he left. Hashem, Hashem, what's going on here? True story, he opened the envelope and he, he took out a bunch of $100, $10,000. He poured all of it, 10 pieces. $100,000. Listen to me, you think the story ends? It just started. He rushed to the hospital and he gave it to the secretary. He said, I don't believe it. Don't believe it. What happened? How did you get it? Everything is closed this time. <laughs> Just please. They called the doctor. The professor came. He did the surgery. He took care of the baby. It was successful. And then they went back home. And now he's telling that story in Shabbat lunch. After everybody left, a guy came to him and says, you know what? Now, the, the, by the way, lunch, the Kiddush was around 30 days, around a month after the surgery. After recovery, you know, I'm shorting the story. He says, now you answer a question I have for 30 days. So what do you mean? Say, I tell you. My father, Rabbi Shmuel, is the head of yeshiva in Zichron Yaakov. It's a place close to Hadera, northern side of Israel. He was in touch with that rich man for almost a year about his institutions and yeshivot and kindergarten for kids. Uh, Haredi, very, very religious. And he wanted help from that guy. So he was sending him... Uh, pictures and, 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 and recommendations from great rabbis and PowerPoints for almost a year. Long, long discussion. So he set up with him a time and a date to come. And he says, you have to be there. Mm-hmm. You have to be there four o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll give you something. He says, listen, I need to. So I'll give you something nice. Don't worry about it. They all agreed. This Rabbi Shmuel, the head of the yeshivot, um, he was in a hotel. He says, I have to be there on time. This guy says, 4, 4 o'clock, I'm going to give you earlier. 3.15, that's what he said. 3.15, he gets to an elevator. Elevator got stuck. It took him a few minutes to find out what to do. Buzzing, talking, talking on the phone. After 10 minutes, just the reception noticed someone stuck in the elevator. So they called the technician. What you can do? There's nothing more I can do. The technician came an hour later. And after 30 minutes, 
they, they got him out. So it's almost five. He's running to the, some, the guy's house, the rich man's house. So then he left. Yeah. He's in his office. So he went, he, he told the taxi driver, let's go to the office. Got the address. He's not going to draw. Shalom Aleichem, Aleichem Shalom. Ani, 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 my name is Shmuel. We talked on the phone. We send you all the PowerPoint and the recommendation. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave it to your uh, guy, Yungerman. You're Yungerman, right? So this Rabbi Shmuel, his name, Rabbi Shmuel, last name Yungerman. And this guy, Avrech, his name, I don't know his name. They didn't mention his name. But his name, last name is not Yungerman. I don't know, it's Levi, maybe it's Cohen. But Yungerman in Yiddish means uh, uh, young students. Avrech, someone that's studying yeshiva, they call him. So the rich man thought that the gift should be to him. You understand what happened here? Yeah. The timing, he was there, the younger man, at the right place, at the right time. Now, the, they, won't go, they ask a question, the greater rabbi, maybe he should get the money. Because the money was meant for him. He did all the work, and the money should go to his yeshivot. Now, if this guy comes, and he takes it, and it's all, all by mistake. He just say younger man, and this guy's less than his younger man. So they ask Rabbi Greinemann. He, he passed away uh, four years ago. So this story is, I don't know, it's five or six years ago. Rabbi, what we should do? I was supposed to be there to get the money. I worked the whole year to get it. And this guy, within an hour, less than an hour, he got 100000 that was supposed to come to me. So they checked the halacha and they told him, listen, the halacha says, this is two poor people, and one failed to come at a certain time, he lost his uh, rights, and he goes to the second one that comes. Rabbi Shaul Shmuel Garnemain was puzzled, but he says, if that's the halacha, I accept it completely. By the way, he called to the rich man and told him the whole, about the whole story. He says, I didn't know. So they told him what happened. He, goes to him, he says, I'm happy that at least my money didn't go to a crook. Mm-hmm. It goes to save a baby. I'm so happy. The Rabbi Shmuel went back to Yeshiva and he accepted uh, the money, uh, the, the ruling, the verdict. Two weeks later, he opened an envelope from the America, a check $120,000. The rich man felt that he needs to correct the injustice that happened to him. And out of his goodwill, he sent them an extra check for $120,000. Wow. Wow. God has mysterious plan. You don't know where the, where the salvation would come. The power of Tefillah, a mother cries over her baby. A father cries over reading Tehillim. The remedy is there. A street next to you. Just knock on the door. Make the effort. Hashem sent messengers all the time. Who would believe? You know, if I would not tell you this, the names, or the, I verified the story. You think it's from Hollywood. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Who heard about such a story? We're talking about large sum of money. If Hashem wants, it will help you to be in the right place in the right time. And he will hold the other one in a stuck elevator, if needed. God has mysterious way, but the power of tefillah that will let them get what they need for, them, for to save their child. Yes, the professor was cruel. The professor was cold blood. He has cold, cold blood, but. He was expert. He was number one. He was the best in his field. Everything that happens in that story happens for a reason. So we should not take things for granted. And when we get to the point that we have no more solution, we're standing looking to the thin air. Look up. Hashem is there for you. Open the Hilim. Said the prayer, what happens now from now on is from Hashem. Because you trusted Him, He will support you. A baby was saved, 
and yeshiva got an extra money, and everybody, it's a happy end. I want to wish everybody here that maybe this story, a real story, will teach us a lesson to trust Hashem, to know that God works sometimes in mysterious ways, but should accept everything. If we accept, it means you trust Hashem. If Hashem says, you trust me, I'll help you. If you trust someone else, go to him. See if he can help you. On behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, I want to thank everybody in the Medina family for hosting this year. Please go ahead to Ohev Israel Foundation and support us with whatever you can. When you support us, God will support you and give you an abundance to um, have a blessing in your life. Shalom. See you Hashem, next week. Same place. Thank you.